I've tried several displays to use with Arduino and one of my favorite is the 1.8 inch TFT color display with the ST7735 driver. If you're interested in getting this display working, I'm going to go over a few things you should know and give you a few example sketches that I use as templates for my projects. I found a few different modules for this display, but these two are the easiest to connect because they support 5 volts and it can be connected directly to Arduino. But this one has an uneven backlight making the text look brighter on the bottom, so I prefer this one. The third module also doesn't have this issue, but it only supports 3.3 volts logic, so you need to add a bunch of resistors to the IO pins, plus a 15 ohm resistor for the backlight to 5 volts. I tried all the libraries I could find for this display, and I think the UCG library is the best for most situations, although it's kinda slow. The other fruit library is much faster, but only if you use the basic font that looks pixelated. Depending on the requirements of your project, you can choose which library to use. One of the issues when searching for a good library for a display is to have a way to refresh the text with an included background to clear the previous text automatically. If you try doing it manually by drawing a box before printing the text, it's going to flicker. The Adafruit supports this background only when using the basic font, so I usually prefer the UCG library. First I will go through the code for the UCG library, and later I will show how to use the Adafruit. The links for the libraries on my sketches are on the description. The display uses the SPI protocol, so we have to connect 5 IO pins, plus the power and the backlight. We are going to use the hardware SPI, so two pins connect in different places depending on your board. Anyway, we first include the library and then create the display defining the pins. I always create a variable to show an increasing number. In the setup, you can change the type of the background for the text. I recommend you use solid background or it's going to look like this. This clears the display, set orientation and text orientation. Here I listed my favorite fonts, and I choose this one for this project. Printing things on the display takes time, so it's better to print on the setup the things that don't change, to avoid printing them all the time. That way the loop is going to run faster. On the loop we increase the variable and convert it into a string to have the right alignment. Here you put the amount of digits, and here the amount of decimals. We first print the variable without modification, so it's going to align to the left. But the issue is that when it goes from 150 to 0, the other two digits are going to remain because we are no longer printing a background over them. So the solution is to print a space when the variable is under 10, and do the same if the variable is under 100. Now to print the variable with the right alignment is much easier because it writes the background for all the digits all the time, so there's no need to add empty spaces. And that's it for this library. But as I mentioned, the refresh rate is not that great. For that reason, I sometimes use the Adafruit library when I have to print a lot of dynamic things and want a higher refresh rate. To use the Adafruit library, you also need to download the GFX library. We include the libraries and declare the pins. In here I add a custom font, which is included on the Adafruit library. This is optional because by default the library uses the standard font, but I wanted to show an example of using both types of fonts so you can see the difference. There are a few fonts that you can choose from that are listed in here. In the setup section we initialize the display, fill to black, set orientation, and disable text wrap to prevent the text from going to the next line when they go over the limits of the screen. You can remove this line if that's what you want. Now we print everything on the display that is not going to change, which is practically everything, except the numbers. We set the color, which we have a few ways to specify. One way is to write here one of the basic colors on this list. But if you want another specific color, you can go to a website like this one and select the color you want and copy the 16-bit code. We set the size of the text. So far we are using the standard font, so this will scale up the same font. That's why it looks pixelated. And finally we print the actual text. 
In here, I start using the custom font I mentioned before, so the text looks smoother. We print this text and go back using the standard font. We draw a bunch of shapes. As with the other sketch, we increase the variable and convert it into a string to have the right alignment. We're going to print the variable, but this time we set a background color so it overrides the previous text. Without a background, this is how it will look like. But when we go from 3 digits to 1, the last 2 digits will remain showing, so you need to check how many digits are, and when there's less than 10, we print a black box on the second digit. If it's less than 100, print another black box in the third digit. This is basically the same thing we did with the UCG library, but this time we use black boxes instead of spaces. We also print this string to have the right alignment, just like we did with the other library. Now I'm going to print the variable on the bottom using a custom font. The problem is that it doesn't support the background color, so we need to draw a black box over the old text before printing the new one. That's why it flickers. You can choose any of the three ways to print values, but I recommend this one with the right alignment. That's it for now, and let me know what kind of projects are you going to build with the display. Good luck and bye bye!